Thank you for coming to check us out again here today at New York Coternix. Today's video, we're going to be dispatching quail using the pull method. I'm going to be pulling the head straight off of the birds instead of using the poultry shears, which seem to be pretty torturous because I have to cut and pull anyway. This method I found to be a lot quicker, seems to be a lot more humane, cleaner, and uh, of course I can't ask the bird's opinion, but in my opinion it seems to be the best method. So we're going to get started, I'll show you how I do that, and if you have any questions or comments definitely leave those below. I'll answer any questions you have. But just as a warning, birds will die in this video, animals will be harmed in the making of this video. If you have a sensitive stomach or you are not with the you know killing of animals even for the purpose of eating which we're doing here please turn away from the video right now turn the video off uh don't leave me any nasty comments or do i don't know oh sh why are you all in there So I just looked behind me and realized that I left the hutch open for probably the last hour or so while I was making the video. Nobody left, amazingly enough, and uh, that's the same exact side that they got out from last time when I made the video when they got around the neighborhood and they are all accounted for. So I guess they just didn't want to leave. Anyway, just as a warning, we will be killing animals in this video. I will be dispatching six birds if you have a weak stomach or you don't want to see this type of thing, please turn the video off. Turn away from the channel. Don't leave me any nasty comments because I did warn you this is what we do. We kill animals around here to eat. So, you know. So let's get started. Alright, so in the last video where I dispatched some quail, I showed you how I do it using these shears, which aren't the best shears in the world. Uh, when using these I have to do a cut and pull anyway So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm just gonna use my hands. I'm gonna show you the Pull method directly just you know both hands pulling the heads right off uh, It's clean and quick believe it or not and more than likely a lot more humane than using these Dullish shears. I mean, they're not really dull, but they don't take the head directly off I would prefer that they did but since they don't this is the method that I'm gonna use from now on and I'm gonna share that with you today I'm still going to use these shears to process the rest of the quail, you know, getting the legs off and whatever other parts that we're not using. Now, it's a lot easier when you hold the quail a certain way, so I'm going to show you how I do that. Alright, so I'm going to hold my quail like this, facing me. I'm going to grab my bucket and you're going to take the hand that you're using to pull oh. and you're going to want to grab the quail like this, thumb at the back, forefinger in the front and then just twist and pull. comes right off really clean and you want to hold the quail down in the bucket so it drains all the blood out. Of course, there will be some movement. But that's just nerve reaction. It's perfectly natural. And it might last for up to a minute. What you're going to be looking for, I'm not sure if you can see this or not. The plumage will relax after it's all said and done. After all the nerves are settled. You know, right now there's some tremors and everything. But this plumage will relax. It'll go in and then fall a little bit out and be nice and loose. We want to get as much of this blood out of the bird as possible by hanging them upside down. Until he's done moving and this plumage just spreads out just a little bit. There it is, see? It's trying to spread out just a little bit. So we'll put them to the side. And I'll show you another one.
All right. This little guy right here, we're gonna do the same thing. We'll get a firm grip on him, have him facing us. We're gonna take our forefinger and our thumb, put our thumb to the back, forefinger to the front. <coughs> Twist and pull. Some of them come off a little easier than others. That one was a little bit tough. Uh, so yeah. And again, we're gonna wait for the tremors to set in, then stop. And if the bird doesn't start tremoring right away, believe me, it will after a few seconds. It might take up to 20 seconds for it to start, but there it is, you know? And once it stops, again, this plumage will draw in closer to the body and then spread a little bit out. And it'll stop moving all together. And you can put your bird to the side so you can finish processing. Now again, this method, in my opinion, is a lot quicker, smoother, cleaner, and humane than using these shears, which if they did cut all the way through would be absolutely perfect because it would be, you know, just clip and done. But since I have to clip and pull using these shears, I'm gonna go ahead, like I said, and use this pull method from now on. Unless I happen to cross a new pair of shears that are touted as excellent. All right, I'm gonna show you again. We have our quail. I'm gonna go ahead, again, forefinger and thumb. I'm gonna put the thumb behind, forefinger in front, and pull. And the head comes right off. That one was really easy. came off really clean I mean really clean you can actually use this for like a decoration you know end of a walking stick or something if you can preserve it properly of course it could be used for natural cat food all of these parts natural dog food uh, what have you since I don't have a dog and I don't feed my cat natural cat food I'm not gonna get into that but there are options folks Take our bird facing us, four finger, thumb, thumb behind, and we'll pull. Head comes right off. Again, we're waiting for that, for that plumage to come back out after the shaking stops. Again, the shaking is not the bird going through pain, it's just natural nerve reaction after the beheading. All those signals firing off at once is what's causing all this shaking. So, once it's done, again, we're watching for this plumage to relax right after it draws in closer to the body. And again, if you can see that, there it is. All right, so that bird's ready to put down. And then we have the last one here. All right. Again, last one. We have our bird. I'm gonna take our forefinger and our thumb like this and pull. Now, again, like I mentioned, some are easier than others. That one was a little tougher. Uh, 
Now it's an absolute mess inside of this bucket. You want to keep in mind that unless you want a bunch of flies around, you want to clean this mess up as soon as possible. So what I normally do is get this into a bag, into the trash immediately after, then rinse out the bucket. But today we're also going to be processing the birds outside. So we're going to fill this bucket up with guts and everything. Okay, and this one is almost done. You see that plumage about to relax after it draws back into the body. Still a couple of convulsions. And there we have it. All right, so that's it as far as the dispatch of the birds. We're gonna run through the processing really quick just so I can show you guys who haven't seen it in any of my other previous videos. I'm gonna get these going. We're gonna take the skin directly off of these birds. We're not gonna bother leaving the skin on. It does take a little bit more time. So again, like I mentioned before, I'm still gonna use these shears to process the birds only because they are really good for that, you know, clipping legs. I can't karate chop these bad boys off and I mean, using a knife is gonna be ridiculous. So why not? I uh, can't dismiss these things altogether. They are pretty good for the other uses. Uh, so let's get started and see how quickly we can get this quail processed. It is again, a really quick process. I'm gonna show you how I do it right here, right now. Let's get the timer started. I'm going to split it right up the middle, get that skin off, and pull the leg out one side. Pull the leg out other side. I like to go up and around the back. And again, this is taking all the skin off. We're not leaving any of the skin on the bird. This is the easiest way to go about it. The skin does get kind of sticky around the tail end near the oil gland. But you can still rip that right off. Okay, you're gonna have some feathers that stick around because of course it's warm, fresh meat. Now I'm gonna clip these wings right here. Pull a couple more of these feathers off the tail end. Turn them around, clip right here and right here. Ugh. Pull that right on out of there. Then I'm going up the back, spatchcocking. Without the risk of getting fecal matter in our bird because I've pulled out the intestines. I'm going right up the back of the spine on both sides, either side, to the English majors out there. I'm gonna reach in here, pull the guts right on out. Everything goes. Now some people do keep some of these parts. I'm not even gonna bother. Nobody eats them. I mean, I do, but it's such a tiny bird. I should be on a waste nothing policy here. I think from now on, I'm gonna keep them. But I don't have a bowl out here, so we're just gonna go ahead and get rid of everything. Keep in mind, you got the lungs in there. They like to stick to the sides, the rib cages, and get those bad boys out by popping a finger up under them and dragging it through. 
and now you have a mostly processed quail here. It's still a big mess because we have to take it inside and clean it up, but this is what we have. So let's do another one really quick. I'm gonna take this one, clip them at the legs. Lit it right down the breast. Pull the legs out. Got that little piece of skin stuck right there at the knuckle. Don't worry, we'll get that later. We'll go around the back, pull the skin up towards the neck, then out towards the wings. Get as much of that skin off of there as possible. Start pulling at the tail feathers. Again, the skin near the oil gland does stick it's not the easiest to get off but you can get it off you can leave it there if you want up to you completely again you're going to want to get all as many of these feathers as we can off of the bird we'll clip it where there's no meat which is usually after the last joint on the wing i'll go ahead and do that And after we've cleared a few more of these feathers, I'll make a V-shaped cut here. Now sometimes those intestines don't come right out, but whatever, just be careful. So this one, Going right up the spine. And once you cut it up the spine, grab it from the top. Now if you do it perfectly, everything will come out all at once. Pretty much everything at least. That time it actually worked out perfectly. Only thing that was left was one lung. That was hanging on for dear life right there. So that would be the perfect example of the best case scenario when you're trying to clean these quickly. And we'll put that to the side so we can clean it up later. And we'll get started on our next bird. Clip these legs. Uh, what the hell? Clip the legs off. Split it right there. Breast. Now, here in the esophagus, you can see his most recent meal. There's some bird seed and some eggshell in there. I added the eggshell for calcium supplement, and it wasn't digested yet. It was still sitting in the bird's neck. Most people don't feed their birds right before they call them. I always forget because I just feed my birds out of habit and then, you know. But whatever, I don't have a problem with the last meal philosophy. Doesn't bother me one bit. And usually when I make the selections, I'm taking out the aggressors the ones who are really causing the most problems, which, you know, maintains the peace for a little bit longer inside of the hutch. Now again, we're pulling out towards the wings and away from the tail feathers. 
well away from the tail all those feathers come out pretty easily with the skin and again we're going to cut off the part that we're not using which is after the last knuckle for me And I'm going to cut out this part right here. Again, making it easier to just go right up the back on both sides of the spine. Oh, made a cut straight through the lung. Yuck. Pull everything right on out. All the insides. And again, you can still see some of the food that was eaten not too long ago. And that's because I feed the birds, I, I keep them, I try to keep them on a constant feed cycle. I don't let them run out of food if I can help it. So at any given time during the dispatch, I will find food right there in their throats. Now we're going to hurry up and get the rest of these going so the flies don't have a complete field day out here. They're starting to come around, come around. And I'm not all about sharing, especially with flies. I hate flies. So let's get this done. All right, so we got our last bird. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get this timer started. Now that I gotta warm up a big pile of messy birds that has to be cleaned off. I'm gonna see how quickly we can get this one done. Get these flies out of here, get everything cleaned up. All right. So again, let's get this timer going in three, two, one.
know what that shit is. All right, we get this last lung out of here. And we have completely finished this bird. So, looks like we're able to do this in relatively quick time. Again, this is not a hard process. Uh, the hardest part of this for most folks will probably be the actual dispatching of the bird. Uh, once you get your hands in here and realize this is food that we're dealing with, you know, it becomes all love and you are able to get through it that much quicker. Uh, so here we have our dirty pile of quail. I'm gonna go get them cleaned up, show you the end result. Stay tuned. All right, so here we have our quail on ice. Got the ice directly from the freezer. I didn't have to go buy ice for this one because we only had a small batch of quail. Uh, again, you want to keep these birds on ice for a little while. I usually keep them on ice for a couple of hours, stick them in the refrigerator while they're chilling out. Uh, once that rigor mortis sets in and let's go, I'll take them off the ice bath, package them up in freezer bags two at a time, label them, and put them right in the freezer. All right, so thank you again for coming to check us out here today at New York Eternix. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. Also, leave a like for the video and subscribe to the channel for more. I'm always going to be coming back with more videos periodically, so hit that bell. Make sure that you, you know, be notified every time I do drop a new video. I'd love to hear your opinion. If you have any questions, comments, again, I know I'm repeating myself, but leave those below. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel and subscribe to the channel. Thank you again from New York Attorneys.